evening, everyone, and welcome to this service of evening prayer brought to you by Christ Church Beaurepaire in Beaconsfield, uh, but as usual on uh, Wednesday uh, when it's a live broadcast coming from my home in Verdun. Today we'll be using uh, evening prayer right one from the uh, U.S. Episcopal Book of Common Prayer, 1979. And the service begins on page 61. The, uh, the link to the text is in the, in the comment section or on the Facebook event page. And our hymn will be, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I will bless the Lord who giveth me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because he, has, he is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought not to, which ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We will say together the Phos Hilaron, O Gracious Light, on page 64. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all worlds. The psalm appointed for today is, is Psalm 49. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Hear this, all you peoples, hearken all who dwell, you who dwell in the world. You of high degree and low, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom. In my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb. And set forth my riddle upon the harp. Why should I be afraid in evil days? When the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me. The wickedness of those who put their trust in their goods. And boast of their great riches. We can never ransom ourselves. O deliver to God the price of our life. For the ransom of our life is so great. That we should never have enough to pay it. In order to live forever and ever. And never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also. Let like the dull and stupid they perish. 
and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation. Though they call the lands after their own names. Even though honored, they cannot live forever. They are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who foolishly trust in themselves. And the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep, they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They go down straightway to the grave. Their form shall waste away. And the land of the, of the dead shall be their home. But God will ransom my life. He will snatch me from the grasp of death. Do not be envious with some, when some become rich. Or when the grandeur of their house increases. They will carry nothing away at their death. Nor will their grandeur follow them. Though they thought highly of themselves while they lived. They were praised for their success. They shall join the company of their forebears, who will never see the light again. Those who are honored but have no understanding are like the beasts that perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. That's Revelation 5, 1 through 10. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals, and I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven, horn and seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered by your blood, by your blood you ransomed for God, saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God and they will reign on the earth. Here endeth the lesson. For our canticle, we will say a song of creation. That's on page 47 in the Episcopal Prayer Book. We will say it together in unison. O all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye heavens, bless ye the Lord. O ye waters that be above the firmament, bless ye the Lord. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye sun and moon, bless ye the Lord. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. O ye showers and dew, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winds of God, bless ye the Lord. O ye fire and heat, bless ye the Lord. 
O ye winter and summer, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye dews and frost, bless ye the Lord. O ye frost and cold, bless ye the Lord. O ye ice and snow, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord. O ye light and darkness, bless ye the Lord. O ye lightnings and clouds, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O let the earth bless the Lord. O ye mountains and hills, bless ye the Lord. O all ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye wells, bless ye the Lord. O ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. All ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord. All ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye people of God, bless ye the Lord. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. O ye humble and hu holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise him and magnify him forever. Our gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Matthew 13, 10 through 17. Then the disciples came and asked Jesus, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but do not see it, and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Here endeth the gospel lesson. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Sometimes um, we get these passages in the uh, lectionary. And this is the daily office lectionary, so it's not the Sunday lectionary. And I, as a preacher, don't have any good ideas about what to say about it, uh, because I don't for sure know what Jesus is talking about. Not that I always do, but uh, sometimes I have some idea. Um, this is one of those passages, and it's <laughs> curious because if you look up this particular passage, it's essentially omitted from the Sunday lectionary. It never comes up on a Sunday. It's tucked away into the daily office mm. lectionary, hoping no one will notice it. Mm. Um, we have both the portion that comes before it and the portion become, that comes after it in the Sunday lectionary. Right before is the parable of the sower, which you certainly know. You know, the, the sower, you know, throws, sows seed on, 
on uh, the rocky ground and on the path and on the wheat, you know, the and you know, the, and the seeds are trampled underfoot, or the or the weeds come up and choke the seeds, and only the seeds that fall on good soil grow and and uh, produce healthy plants. We all know that parable. And then right after today's passage, there's the explanation where Jesus actually explains to the disciples the meaning of the parable, which he very, very rarely does. He usually doesn't explain them. But between those two, you have this, this, uh, this passage where they ask him, why do you speak to people in parables? And he basically says, so they won't understand, uh, or that uh, uh, it's not for them to to understand the secrets. Or the word "secrets" here is also um, can be translated as mysteries. In Greek, it's mysteries, um, mysteries. It's a more religious word, um, like we talk about the mysteries of the Christian faith, like the sacraments, the mystery of Holy Communion, of baptism, and whatnot. Um, so, I, I can understand, you know, not understanding the parable, but it's almost like it's intentional. And, like I said, I don't know exactly what to do with this, but thinking, it made me think about how we understand scripture, church teachings, at different levels, depending on where we are in our life. And there are, we, we, when we approach the Bible, we approach it at different levels. When you learned, when you learned about the Bible in Sunday school as a child, you're at one level. I mean, they're, you know, different children are at different levels, but you're at one, at a different level than you are as an adult. Adults are at different levels as well. And this is not necessarily about intellect. This is about uh, our understanding in the spiritual terms. Uh, you know, there's things in the Bible that can, you know, make us scratch our heads or maybe even, we, maybe we even find uh, disturbing or uh, um, abhorrent. But the, the scriptures, as well as many church teachings actually can be understood on many different levels. And that doesn't mean that one level is wrong and another is correct. We encounter these truths at the level we are at in our, in our spiritual journey, in our lives, And perhaps that's uh, kind of something that's going on here. Jesus is teaching to the people, the masses. And it's certain that they, their understanding uh, may be at one level. And then he teaches to the apostles on a different level because they are they are chosen for a special mission. So these things we can you know understand on different levels that doesn't mean that someone who doesn't hasn't got to that point yet there's is not that there's something wrong with them. And this has kind of been a tradition in the church. It kind of fell, it's, it's kind of fallen by the wayside in uh, our modern kind of literalistic 
uh, age where you have people who, you know, you have religious fundamentalists on one side who say, you know, it's, uh, the Bible is literally true in all aspects, historically and whatever. And you have anti-religious people who say, well, it's, oh, well, it says this, this is nonsense, so it's all false. And the truth is between those two. And that's a hard place for modern people to be because we're used, we, we live in a literalistic age where, you know, it's either fact or it's either true or false. It's fact or fiction. And there's no, uh, you know, mediating point where something can be, you know, not, you know, literally factually historical, but it's also true. But if you look back in the history of the church, in the early days of the of the church, um, the the uh, great saints and doctors of the church, as we call them, like Saint Augustine. Um, not that I agree with Saint Augustine on a lot of things, but uh, um, he spoke of understanding scripture on various levels. There's the literal. There's the allegorical, which you know, the symbolic. There's, I can't remember all. There was spiritual, uh, moral, so you can, you know, you know, extract some moral lesson from it. You can understand it on a on a symbolic level. You can understand it on a higher spiritual level, or the literal, you know, just the literalistic level. You know, and and we look at, just looking at our passages today. Also, the book of Revelation. There's some crazy stuff going on there. Uh, and if we took that literally, I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> that's some wild thing going on there. Just read the book of Revelation, and there's some crazy Im Im imagery, you know, these, these uh, creatures with m multiple eyes and horns. And uh, it's obvious that it was never meant to be a literal, taken literally. Um, but there have been people who tried to take it, you know, literally that this is exact, you know, this is going to be the way things happen in the end times, or this is, you know, this means that, and this means this. But um, my best take on this, and I said it's not the, <laughs> it's not, uh, I'm not super um, content with this take. Because I really don't know. I really don't know. There is some things that Jesus says that are just mysterious and baffling. Maybe by design to, to you know, to shock us out of our, you know, out of our um, preconceptions and our comfort zone. But that there are ways of understanding and levels of understanding depending on where a person is in their life. And whether you're at the, the level of, a, you know, the, the masses of people who are hearing his teaching for the first time, whether you, you're at the level of a, uh, of a disciple that has uh, come to understand by living and walking with Jesus. It's all about a, a journey. And it's, uh, we can't... If you're at one level of understanding, you can't make someone who's at a different level of understanding come to yours. They have to get there themselves. And I think that's part of the, the, the faith journey is we have to walk it ourself. And we can't uh, walk it for someone else. And at what at some point in our life may seem like a mystery may seem uh, like a nonsensical point of our uh, uh, of faith. At another point, in, in another time, a period of our life may make perfect sense. We just have to keep uh, walking that that uh, uh, that faith journey uh, and not be discouraged by whatever stumbling blocks may may uh, get around but just keep 
keep going and, and then trusting that uh, Christ will lead us uh, on the on the good path. Amen. Amen. And now we will have our hymn, which is I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. And the text is uh, in the comments. The text is in the comments section. It's common phrase 508. 508. <laughs> So it seems like uh, we have some technical difficulties, so the music we prepared is not, um, is not playing, so we'll sing a cappella. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest, lay down the weary one, lay Continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 66. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and it sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
we will use suffrage, suffrages A. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of all enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to uh, submit your request for intercessory prayer in the, in the comment section below the video as we pray together. Loving God, we... We lift up to you all of suffering humanity. We give thanks for the for the seeming uh, uh, lessening of the of the pandemic, but we know that it still rages on in many parts of the world, and we still live with restrictions. We pray for those who are suffering from this illness, for those who care for them, for exhausted health care workers, for those who administer and distribute vaccines. We pray especially for, for countries that have limited access to vaccines, that countries that have access may help those in need, those countries in need, so that we may overcome this, this global crisis together as one human family. God of love and mercy, welcome. Lord, we pray for all the needs of our parish and for our families and friends. We pray for those who are sick, those who are, and those who are suffering from other, other adversities. We pray for Sandy. We pray for Donna. We pray for all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for those who mourn. We pray for all those who have died, especially this time of the year when we, we, we commemorate those who have died and, and pray for their souls. God of love and mercy. Welcome. We pray for our governments, federal, provincial, municipal, and all the leaders of the nations, leaders of the world, leaders in government and business and in religion, we pray that they all may be directed by a sincere desire for the common to, to, for, to, to promote the common good and common welfare. We pray for our municipal elections, that the, the citizens may be guided to elect leaders who will 
work for the common good of our cities and municipalities. God of love and mercy. We pray for all who are persecuted, all those who are discriminated against because of their, their race, their religion, their sexual orientation, their gender identity, their gender, their national origin, their disability. We pray that each in every human human person may be inspired to see the face of God in their neighbor and treat everyone as a child of God. God of love and mercy. Gracious God, we lift up to you all these prayers that we have spoken or spoken, written, or, or whispered silently in our hearts. All this we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. We say together the general confession on page 71. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we may show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may, best, may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this service of uh, evening prayer. Next week, it is important to note, next week we will not have the same type of service Next week, November 3rd, 7 o'clock, in the church, in Christ Church of Beau Repair, we will have an, uh, an All Souls Day Requiem Mass. It will be broadcast online, but if you are in, in, uh, in the West Island, please uh, come and join us in the church. It will be a service of Holy Communion, and we will be uh, reading the names of those who have died. Uh, and for those who have died... In the past year, we'll be lighting individual candles for them and praying for all those who have died. If you would like to, to uh, add the names of your loved ones, loved ones or friends that have died, please uh, send those to the church office. And there's also a sign-up sheet at, in church on Sunday, and it will be there this Sunday, or send them to the church office. Uh, this is a very moving, uh, meditative service, uh, and I encourage you to come in person if, at po if possible. The other big thing is my, uh, my induction as priest of Christ Church of Beau my official installation as the priest of the parish by the bishop. Uh, bishop Mary Irwin Gibson will be with us at the church 
on Saturday, uh, November second, November sixth, at two o'clock p.m. November sixth, two o'clock, for this service of induction. It will be broadcast on our Facebook page as well. Uh, if you would like to attend in person, you need to register. Uh, if you're on our parish list, you have received an invitation and a form to register. And I encourage you to do that as soon as possible because starting this Friday, I will open up registration to non-parishioners. Uh, so if, if you are a, a Christchurch parishioner and you want to reserve your place, please do it now. If you're not, if you're listening, you're not on our parish list and would like to be, and like to attend this service, please uh, send your email to uh, the church office, and we'll put you on the parish list. Otherwise, if you're if you're a, a parishioner of another parish, uh, that uh, we'll be opening up um, registration to the general public on Friday. I do want to have a good turnout from our parish and in general, and I, so we have a, a, a big, joyous celebration of new ministry. And the following day, November 2nd, Sunday, we will have, uh, we're celebrating All Saints Day in the church. And this Sunday, October 31st, uh, we will be celebrating Reformation Day uh, in the church at 10 o'clock. So lots of services to attend but uh, lots of important things going on. I wish you a, uh, a blessed rest of the week and a good night.